The process of making a movie is one long series of decisions. The filmmakers have to make sure everything, from casting choices to shot selection, are up to par so they can make the best film possible. But sometimes movie makers overthink things, and when that happens, they run the risk of making bad decisions that can derail the project before it even hits theaters. Here are Screen Rant's 10 decisions that ruin movies. Let's get real. A Venomous Force. After the success of Spider-Man 2, moviegoers couldn't wait for the follow-up, especially when they found out that Venom would be featured as the main villain of the film. What they got was not what they were hoping for. Eddie Brock is seen by many as a missed opportunity. Part of that is probably due to director Sam Raimi not wanting to use the character in the first place. Raimi wanted to focus instead on Sandman and Harry Osborn as the new Goblin. The end result was something that felt tacked on in a movie that already had a lot to unpack. Sony just should have let Raimi do his thing. They love me. The force is strong with this kid. The Star Wars prequels had a ton of potential, but in a lot of ways they failed to live up to the visions we all had. Of their many downsides, one of the most unforgivable was George Lucas' decision to make Anakin Skywalker a nine-year-old kid in The Phantom Menace. Because of his age and where he's introduced in the film, Anakin felt like a side player in the story. The trilogy was supposed to be about him, but by the time we got to episode two, he was so much older that it was like meeting a new character, instead of seeing a natural progression like we did with Luke. The ending is not legend. Fans of the novel I Am Legend is based on had issues with the film's ending. The movie deviated from the book and showed Dr. Robert Neville sacrifice himself so Anna could get away with a cure. Lots of viewers preferred the alternate original conclusion, which featured Neville discovering the dark seekers he's been hunting are real individuals with feelings and emotions. It was thought-provoking and stayed true to the story's intended themes. So why did Warner Brothers change it? Test screening reactions to the alternate ending were negative, so it was scrapped for what we saw in the theatrical cut. Singer doesn't return. After X2 ended with a tease for the iconic Dark Phoenix saga, fans got hyped for the follow-up. But things took a dark turn when Brian Singer left the project and gave way to Brett Ratner. Instead of sticking with the original treatment that was more loyal to the comics, X-Men 3 tried to balance two famous storylines, Dark Phoenix and Mutant Cure, without developing either of them properly. The film had no real emotional payoff and too many mutant characters and subplots, and it derailed the franchise for years afterwards. If only Singer had stayed on, things might have turned out in a better and more entertaining way. Batman for the Family After Batman Returns received complaints for its dark tone and grossed less than its predecessor, Warner Brothers decided to take the franchise in a more kid-friendly direction. Because of this, Michael Keaton and Tim Burton decided not to return for Batman Forever, sending the series down a dark road. Joel Schumacher embraced the camp and totally missed what made Bruce Wayne such a compelling character. The film was also accused of being excessively commercial to market toys and merchandise to children. Warner Brothers would have been smarter to keep Keaton and Burton on board and rely on Superman for a more easygoing flick. This is one instance where brooding is okay. Why? The Hobbit, an unexpected trilogy. The Middle-earth faithful couldn't wait to see Peter Jackson's Hobbit adaptation after the success of Lord of the Rings, but that enthusiasm turned to cautious optimism when it was announced that the small book would be split into three films. And not just three films, three massive films. Instead of a rousing fantasy adventure, viewers were treated to a narrative spread thin over multiple features that dragged on forever. Jackson overindulged, injecting the new trilogy with too much CGI action and not enough substance to make us care. It's a shame because he was able to direct some really top-notch sequences, if he had produced a single, more focused movie, it would have turned out fine. Iron Man 2? Not too fast. Once Iron Man made Marvel Studios a force to be reckoned with, fans couldn't wait for the sequel. And neither could the studio. They planned ahead to forge the road to the Avengers, but their production schedules put a lot of stress on the filmmakers, including Jon Favreau. Iron Man 2 was rushed in pre-production, and didn't give Favreau enough time to balance Tony Stark's story with the larger shared universe connections Marvel wanted. The end result was a messy film that fumbled around with a compelling character and a complex film. The studio was obviously more occupied with the future instead of the present, with a larger role for S.H.I.E.L.D. and hints at what was to come. In Brightest Day in CGI Warner Brothers finally looked to expand their DC library when they made a Green Lantern film in 2011 but it ended up doing more harm than good. The movie was tarnished by poor execution and an undercooked script, which relied more on CGI wizardry than anything else. Martin Campbell seemed out of his element. The action sequences he crafted were kind of silly and not that exciting. He even admitted that the team wasn't exactly sure what to do with the power ring constructs, saying that it was as far as your imagination can go. Normally that creativity is inspiring, but a tighter focus on the direction would have helped. Boxes Alien 3 David Fincher is seen as one of this generation's finest directors, so it seems odd Fox would undercut him so much during the making of Alien 3. 
Afterwards, Fincher went so far as to disown the film, since the studio overrode many of his decisions and interfered with production. It also didn't help that before Fincher came on, Fox scrapped a script by Vincent Ward, which is considered to be one of the greatest sci-fi movies never made. So in addition to not letting a soon-to-be-respected director do his magic, the studio even chose the wrong concept, which angered many longtime fans of the franchise. Is there ever a scenario when the studio meddling is the best option? Too Fast, Zero Diesel. Vin Diesel is the face of the Fast and Furious franchise now, but he sat the second installment out after saying the script wasn't up to puck. Because of this, Universal dismantled the project and wrote a completely new screenplay, leaving Paul Walker's Brian O'Connor as the only remaining original character. The film was supposed to be the story of Dom and Brian teaming up to take down a drug kingpin, but the film evolved into something that felt more like a standalone than a continuation, and it was criticized for being too loosely connected to the franchise. Maybe Universal should have worked things out with Diesel and brought him back into the fold sooner. Those are our picks for decisions that ruin movies. Are there any we missed? Which movie decisions get your blood boiling? Sound off in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.